welcome back to Change Your Perspective. I do hope that you're having an amazing day. And if you're not, then I do hope that by the end of this video, you'll be feeling a lot better. <laughs> All right, so I just want us to have a chat today. Yes, I can't actually hear your responses, but that's all right, okay? Today we're gonna to talk about disagreements and having disagreements. And not just having disagreements, but disagreements with persons that you go to church with. And if it is you don't go to church, then you still would know what it is to have a, a disagreement, right? But just recently, I felt as if the Spirit of the Lord was leading me to prepare a message. And it was on this very topic, all right? And uh, I learned so much from it and I really want to share with you guys. So we're looking at Philippians chapter 4. Hmm. Philippians chapter 4 from verses 1 to 7, right? And within this portion of scripture in which verses 2 and 3, you see where Paul is talking to, he's talking to the Philippians, but then he starts talking to two women, right? And he says, I entreat you, and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. And you all, I am not gonna lie to you all, I love Philippians chapter 4 and I have never paid attention <laughs> to that verse, <laughs> right? I literally usually skip past that and go straight to rejoice in the Lord and again I say rejoice and of course my favorite part, right? Which talks about be anxious for nothing but in everything, my prayer and supplication, right? And I would go straight to those verses but in this particular verse, when he's talking to Yodi and Syntyche, you know, when the Lord highlighted, when the Lord led me to this portion of scripture for the first time, I read that verse and it stood out to me and the Holy Spirit revealed to me. He was like, they had a disagreement. I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay, so I had never even known this, right? These two women had a disagreement. And it's not explained what their disagreement was, but it does somewhat help us understand that it's not a disagreement concerning something that would affect their salvation, right? Because Lord on Paul talks about, you know, the brethren now helping these women who assisted him, right, in building up the church right, and whose names are in the last book of life. So we know that they are still saved. They just don't really like each other, right? And this happens as much as we would like to think that church is this place that you go to and you love everybody and you agree with everything that happens within the church. That is not how it goes. And I have experienced this time and time again where it is you know we don't like certain things and and i mean it doesn't even matter who the person is. it could be something that uh the pastor may have decided he's going to do within the church but it started to paint the walls a particular color or you know it's it's there's so many things that can fall within this realm of disagreement right especially within church and let's just be real and honest with ourselves that there have been people that we have bumped heads with in our congregations within leadership <laughs> within boards right we have many disagreements and within this portion of scripture it's amazing right that really and truly what Paul was given us and really the Lord was given us is steps that uh, Paul would have given for us here in resolving this agreements is gonna surprise and really it surprised me that these verses that I have been holding on to for so long actually related to Paul speaking to these two women and so let's get into it all right so before i even share that let's 
look at some supporting scriptures. So in First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, it says this. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 says this. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Mm. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 30 to 32 says this, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgive you. Mm. Now y'all, those first two portions of scripture that I shared has a really common denominator. And it is that it, they both keep saying, be of the same mind. And the mind, of course, that we're talking about here is in Christ, right? So in the mind of Christ. Right, and so even as we are all of one mind and and of one goal and purpose, Christ-mindedness, then we won't butt heads as much, right? Now, of course, we are humans, so we will disagree on on various things, right? But these scriptures talk about how we should react to each other being kind-hearted and tender-hearted oh my goodness and letting all wrath and malice slander because we do this right we do tend to talk about each other right or talk about what it is we do not like right with others and you know we complain behind their backs right and basically what the Lord is saying is that we need to put these things away, right? Put it away. You see that last portion of scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, whew, I had to let the Lord work on me with that for months, okay? Putting away anger because I was angry about certain things. I used to feel like, you know, I wasn't being heard and people weren't listening to me, you know, like I didn't have a voice, you know, and so I had a lot of bitterness. And so I had to let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from me, right? And malice, you know, wishing evil on persons, wishing evil on your brethren. We do these things. And as much as we would like to think that we are perfect and that we are good, godly Christian <laughs> men and women of God, we do have these issues in our hearts right let's be real we have these issues in our hearts concerning certain people there's always that one person you know as i say that one person that your blood just don't take that was always mash your corner you just don't like them right and so let's just assume that this was yodia and syntyche right two women of god who who god loves of course and they are radical and they are serving in the church but they have a disagreement right and so how do we handle this the steps for handling a disagreement number one be reasonable and y'all when as i really thought of this one i i i of myself had to apply this right because in my situation it may not necessarily have been with someone in the church but the Lord had to show me how to apply this 
to my husband, right? So, so this became disagreement even within marriage, right? Be reasonable, Abby. <laughs> right? What you want is this? Is it really necessary, or are you being unreasonable? Is his desire also valid? Right? Is what he is saying also valid? Oh my gosh! Well, it's not easy. But we do have to work on being reasonable. It says, let your reasonableness be known, right? And so we need to work on being reasonable. Secondly is to pray, right? So that portion of scripture that talks about being anxious for nothing, but in everything, basically, pray. Let your, your supplication, right, be known to God. Let everything be known to God. Pray about it. Put it before the Lord. Say, Lord, to this person. And not, not in the way that we, we would usually say it. Eh? Lord, keep that woman away from me because I have problems. No, not like that. <laughs> right? Pray about the situation. Almighty God, and I put this, this issue that I have with this person. I'm putting it before you. This, this, you know, what is the this direction that the pastor is trying to lead this church into? I am not in agreement with it, right? Help me to either understand what it is, if, if it is that you are behind this or not, right? Pray about it. Put it before the Lord. And I mean really pray. Really put it. Not in anger, but really understand and leave it before the Lord and let him be the one to let you know whether or not you are right or you are wrong, right? So, number three is, leave it to God, <laughs> right? You leave in it, right? So we pray in, the scriptures say, with thanksgiving, right? Thank you, Lord, that I will get a response. Thank you, Lord, that this will be sorted out, right? And then we wait, we leave it to God. And please say yes at your feet, Father God. I'm not going to get myself worked up. I'm not going to go to church. And start another argument i'm not going to go to church and start you know another piece of confusion right or get up in this person's face and tell them everything that i'm going to make it or whatever it might be concerning leadership you disagree with what is it all so so you disagree with what it is that handle this pray about it leave it to me and lastly is to and y'all, I know that this is not easy to do. It is easier said than done. But I have tested it. And I've seen God really and truly give me a response and really and truly give me an answer. Not just give me an answer, but work it out for my good and sort it all out. And I was like, okay. And I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to do anything. All right. Confusion and all of the bacchanal and backbiting, all of that should not be in the house of God. And I'm saying this sternly because I've seen it so many times. And I've seen it, you all. I've seen it. And you know what? The world sees it too. And it is sad that they would have to look on us and see us acting the same way that they be, right? And the, the the sad thing also is that if it is you're going to do it in church, then you're going to do it everywhere. You're going to do it within your family. You're going to do it within your workplace. Right? You're going to do it. It's going to be. It's in your heart. Right? And so this is us. This is me challenging us as a church. Challenging us as Christians. To be Christian. Not just on the outward, you know. Not outward appearance. Not just dressing up and looking good and going to church every Sunday. I mean, you're in the heart not slandering not being angry with one another right being kind being tender hearted right looking out for each other letting other people's uh desires putting others before ourselves that's what we are being challenged to do and it is hard it is hard but your christianity is no key and it is not about being religious and raising our hands and worshiping every Sunday. It is more than that. All right? 
we do have disagreements and whether it is you hear those disagreements or you're just keeping it in your heart it's the and this is how we are to handle it we are to first of all what is it be reasonable secondly we are to pray thirdly let's leave it to god and number four So I know that this one was a hard one. This is a difficult one. This is a challenge to all of us to be set apart and, and work and do above and beyond, right? And not just, not in a self-righteous way, way. I'll, I'll take the higher road, right? And I'll be the better man in our hearts. God sees your heart. God sees my heart. He knows whether we are being sincere or not. All right? And so this is a challenge to all of us to work on ourselves and work on the disagreements that we have and please them for the Lord. Amen? All right. So, as usual, I end off sharing and saying that no matter what situation you may be facing, Perhaps all you may need to do is change your perspective. Bye. Bye. <laughs>